that is my mindset. I operate on a level of excellence and you guys need to wake up every single day and you need to operate on a level of excellence and create your masterpiece. I am super excited about this episode and having this amazing interview with Moira Kusaba. I have to tell you, it's absolutely amazing seeing her journey, seeing her success, getting to know her personally and everything you're going to hear in this podcast interview with Moira. Let me tell you a little bit about Moira. So Moira is an elite, high performance and business coach, best-selling author and speaker. As a struggling addict turned seven-figure CEO, Moira is here to show you that you can achieve anything you're, you desire through the power of vision, manifestation, and a solid dose of action. I love this. Her signature book of proof Journal and VPM method combines manifestation techniques rooted in neuroscience with actionable goals. It's the process she credits to helping her achieve the number one spot in a billion dollar company and mentoring so many others to massive success. So, with that, let's dive right in to this podcast on the Personal Perseverance Project with Moira Kusaba. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Personal Perseverance Project. I'm so excited. You heard the intro about Moira Kusaba, who I have known for a handful of years. Such an amazing mom, entrepreneur, business person. We got to talk for a few minutes before. I love her. I love her husband, who I get to connect with almost daily in a really exciting positivity group message we have every single day, but just an amazing person. So I want to start off, Moira, welcome to the show and thank you so much for coming on. Oh my gosh, David, you know, you're one of my favorite people. I adore you. I adore your wife. I adore your family. We go back some years. I love yes. that story and that history and I'm so excited to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Moira. Same, same to you and watching everything you've done. So I want to dive into it because I really spoke about everything you've accomplished um, in your career in, in multiple businesses, ups and downs. But I think the real powerful thing is that where you came from, you know, yeah. I, you know, right now, I think so often it's very easy for people to see the highlight reel on social media, but they don't know the backstory and the hard work that it really takes because I'm really about the hard work it does take to be successful. Yeah. So I'd love for you to share with the listeners just where you started and when you hit some rock bottom times and kind of how that propelled you to where you are today. Yeah. You know, I feel like I, and, and I don't, I don't know if your listeners are believers or what that, and I don't want to put my beliefs on anybody, but it's like, you know, God equips the called; He doesn't call the equipped. And it's like, my, my story is such a testimony to that. And I, mm. I feel like that's one of the reasons why I have had the success is because of my, I can use my own example, right? Mm. Like it's, it's my own life that I look at that. I'm like, holy crap. Like, if little old me who was at rock freaking bottom, who knew nothing, who had no skill set, who had mm. nothing, nothing to put me ahead. If I can, if I can do this, then anybody can do this. So it's wow. like, that's the core belief that I, 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 I just know in my soul, right? Mm. Because Yes, I was, if you want me to just go, you want me to go all the way back? <laughs> yeah, like I love, because the big thing is, I think people love to hear the vulnerability of how you struggled, but like, what was the light bulb moment to say, okay, I'm going to change. And the big thing more is that it's a journey. You yeah. grew into the person you are now. It didn't happen in overnight success. Yes, right? for sure. And I think the other thing that I'm so passionate about is that so often people think that the thing that maybe gives them the scarlet letter or the the shame that they're carrying or the embarrassment or the thing that they think is holding them back i have figured out over a long long time that that's probably the reason why you're actually going to succeed if you embrace it I right love that, that yeah. i realize now that my struggle with addiction is what gave me the grit, the tenacity, the ability to persevere, the ability to like my definition of hard is radically different than most people's definition right. of hard. Right. What a gift, right? Mm. What a gift. But I didn't see that for a long time. So mm. I will take you back. I grew up 
grew up in Maryland, big old Irish Catholic family, youngest of six kids, um, and super loving family. Like, yeah. you know, I've been in a lot of therapy chairs and they're like, what happened growing up? I'm like, uh, nothing like yeah. as perfectly as quote unquote normal as you can get, you know, very loving home. Like there was nothing to point to why in the world did you just jump off this cliff of addiction? Right. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing I can say is it is in my genes, right? Like it's in my genetic makeup. I have addiction in my family. It was not mm -hmm. in my immediate family. So I didn't grow up in an alcoholic household or anything like that. Yeah. But I, my mom used to tell me like, you got to be careful, you know, and, and I can look back and know that even when I was a little kid, like I laugh now because I really do see it as like my superpower. I used yeah. to be like, gosh, I look back and this is what I see. Now yeah. I'm like, I look back and I was right. like freaking like balls to the wall, driven, locked on to anything right. I did. Even when I was like a toddler, my mom was like, oh Jesus, you know, we got, this is what, this is a handful, yeah. you know? And so I see that I was totally type A, mm. totally, you know, just like Enneagram three personality. Yep in sports and in school, I always wanted to be the best. I always went just, I mean, balls to the wall. There's no yeah. other expression for it, right? Like yeah. I just did that in every single thing I did. And so I believe that that is the addiction part of me. Mm. And that when I picked up alcohol for the first time, honestly, because I was so kind of tightly wound and so driven, I can look back and go that I remember just being like, <sighs> <laughs> like I can freaking breathe for the first yeah. time. Like it was right. like a pressure valve, right? right? Right. But it was a pressure valve that I also had put on myself that and maybe mm. society puts on us, right? It feels really good to be top yeah. of your class. It feels really good to be the best on the team. It feels yeah. really good to get all the accolades. And that's like a pressure cooker. And so mm. when I found alcohol, it was a release for yeah. me. And I just thought it over and over and over. And by the time, I mean, this is a, this is just jumping forward by the time I was 21 and I was like med school bound top 10, like I could have gone, you know, sports scholarship, just threw it all away with my addiction. Right. And, um, was that rock bottom is rock bottom gets like yeah. suicidal, couldn't get out of the addiction. Um, you know, couldn't function at that age without alcohol. Like mm. I remember my hands trembling so bad every morning that I had to drink in order to like calm the, the physical withdrawal um, mm. and lots of trial and error, but uh, through, I believe the grace of God and the power yep. of the rooms of recovery, uh, yep. I got sober at 21. So 25 years ago. Unbelievable. So this was, this was in your later 18, 19, 20, 21. And then it things started to change around 21. Were you, um, were you with Brian, your husband at the time? Did was he, no. he no, you didn't know him. So no, this was, I didn't know him. so this was in your years. You didn't know him yet. So what was the aha moment when you finally were like, all right, it's time to make a shift and change, yeah. which put you on the track to where you are now. Yeah. So I, it's so funny because everybody asks me that question, like every time I'm interviewed and I think only an alcoholic or an addict will understand that we can never answer that question. I mean, mm -hmm. we want it so desperately. We are so desperate for a, a change. We're so desperate to save our own lives. We're so desperate to put the people we love out of the pain that we've been putting them through. Yeah. If it was just like a moment of like, I, I need to change my life. There's a million of them for an addict. Right. That's right? a good point. And it's, and we can't answer that question. I mean, my sister was five years sober and relapsed and passed away from addiction. It's like, why, why do I have this gift of sobriety? And she didn't, she, I mean, I don't understand. We can't. And so, I mean, I just believe it was God's grace. I believe I'm here on this earth yeah. for a reason. Um. I, I feel like it was divine intervention at, mm. you know, in a way, but I do believe that, you know, before we put down the drug or the drink, we have no choice. Like an alcoholic or an addict mm. literally doesn't have a choice and no different than somebody with cancer has a choice of having that disease. It's, it's, right. they're locked in it, right. With right. no choice to get out. But once, if you can get out, 
then you have a freedom to choose, right? Mm. And I, 25 years later, still invest in my recovery. I still go to meetings. I still carry the message. I still go into institutions and help others because I believe that's my medicine. Like that's the thing that's going to keep me sober. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that also pairs along with your own growth journey. I'm always talking about you have to constantly invest in yourself with your personal development. There's no destination. You're constantly having to read and grow and listen and go to conferences. And as you're putting it towards your addiction and recovery, you're also putting it towards yourself and personal development as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. So what were you doing at the time? Or so in 21, 22, were you into health and wellness? Were you an entrepreneur? Did you have a career because, or like, were you doing, what was your, like your income per se at that time? Yeah. So I, well, pre sobriety, it was nothing. Um, (laughs) post sobriety, I really was like, kind of woke up to my Mm. life and was like, Oh shit. You know, I, I threw it all away. I threw med school away. I threw everything, like everything was gone. Everything was gone and I had to rebuild my life. And so I was at that place where I was like, you know, I, I still really wanted to pursue medical school. I, I just love the human body. Like I'm fascinated. Mm. Like I was like fascinated with anatomy and physiology yeah. in like sixth grade, you know? So I, I knew that that was kind of the path. The interesting thing looking back is I think it, I said medicine because I also knew that there was bigger income in that realm of I'm fascinated with the human body. Right. This is how I make money. So I've always mm, interesting. been- interesting driven to financial success. Like I've always just wanted, you know, that, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Um, but I didn't end up pursuing medicine. So the interesting thing is I ended up, uh, on a, I was doing a, I was, had a sales job for like a a newspaper Mm. and I walked into a Pilates studio and back then Pilates was like super high level. It was like a two year, three, four year degree almost. Oh, wow. And I remember thinking, just knowing like, this is a large part of what I teach. I always teach, listen to the whisper and it goes all the way back, right. To when I was 21 years old and I walked into this Pilates studio to sell them advertising. I had no idea what Pilates was. And I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. And I remember getting so like (laughs) hyped up with this idea. I can remember talking to my brother that night in the grocery store on my cell phone, which was like new back then. Right. right. (laughs) We're aging ourselves. But I can remember my brother saying like, uh, like chill, like, how about you take a class? Like, what are you talking about? This is what you're going to do with your life. And Mm. it's such an incredible example of everything that you and I like believe in and teach, because it's like, even the people that love you the most and want the best for you are so often going to be the people that take the wind out of your sails and crush Um, your dream. Right. And I had this, just this knowing, and, and I know that he was being the rational one, right? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, hello, you've never even taken a class and this is what you're gonna do with your life. But I was like, And and I had rationalized it like, no, I'm going to do this so I can earn enough income doing something I love to go back to med school. Mm. So that's what I did. And then, of course, because I do everything balls to the wall, (laughs) I turned that into like that turned into this insane business very quickly that I was, you know, the highest paid instructor in our studio, like pretty quickly. And so I didn't foresee that. I didn't foresee that that was going to kind of take over my life, but in a, but it was the best of worlds because I loved what I did. I was working right. one-on-one with people. I was creating impact. I had connection, which filled my soul, but it was also my business. Right. So I had that entrepreneurial fire being stoked that I have had since I was born. So it was right. like, I was figuring out how to run my own business, you know, as right. a 1099 employee. So right. Right. So that was cool too. And then I ended up moving back East a couple years after that, because this was all in California and oh, wow. opening up my own studio. So just, I just kept building the business, right? Mm. Like then I'm buying my own equipment, then I'm leasing my own space. Then I'm looking at, do I buy a building? How many employees can I bring in? How can I scale this thing? Mm. So my twenties and early thirties were just that business and just continuing to try to figure out how do you scale a business like that? You know, you make me think of something. It's a saying I I heard, and I like to say, work with what you have with where you are, because what you have is plenty. And I think so often people are like, I, how am I going to get to where this person is? And you've learned 
from where right there, you just did the best you can with what, with what was in front of you, right? Yeah. You had this business, you excelled type A, you worked balls to the wall, you had it. And then when doors opened, as we're getting into, you just continue to go through the doors. It was like when I started as a state trooper, that's all I was going to do to yeah. 60 years old. And then next thing you know, what's this P90X thing? And like, I didn't know about a business and I didn't know about speaking. It's all because whatever I do in front of us, and it sounds like you're the same way more, you just go yeah. out and let, let's crush it. And then let's see where it takes me. And yes. not even worrying about six months, like what's in right. front of me and be the best I can be right now. Yes. So I just got goosebumps. So there's this philosophy that I teach and I always make the joke. I'm like, this can't be my original thought because it's so good. Yeah. Like, it just can't be mine. <laughs> I must have read this in a book somewhere, but it's this philosophy of like, we drive down a dark road every single night. It can be windy. It can be whatever. And we literally can only see 10 feet in front of us, but mm. we're like 60 miles an hour foot on the freaking gas. Like there could be like a car right. stop 50 feet in front of us. Like we trust in that. Like that's oh. actually insane. Crazy. Crazy. Insane, right? Like there could be wow. a tree over the side. Like we just go, but we don't do that with our life. We're right. like, well, what about this? What about right. this? What's right. going to happen a year from now? What's going to happen five years from now? And I'm like, listen, when I say listen to the whisper, mm. it's what do I do next? What's the next right. step? What's the next step? Right. And as long as you can see that. And what, what I've learned is the rest of the road will not be illuminated. You can't figure it out right. until you keep driving. Like you have to just keep driving. Oh, it's so good. Right? That's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's so true. Because And when you look back, anybody right now, listening, anybody, if you look back at your life, it makes sense now. So, But you, we have to have the faith, right? To just yeah. say, just, the, I love that. Like the 10 feet in front of you around the blind curve. You're like, I'm still going. I'm going right. around the blind curve. There could be a deer coming around the corner. I know here in New York, but I'm just going to keep going. That is, that's a great way to look at it. And that probably goes into more, which is a big thing with you is you are a big person about vision, having yeah. a vision for your life, yeah. you know? So, um, I want to talk about that, but I know like, so you moved back to the East coast and then what happened from there? Because this plays into what you just explained literally is playing into where yeah. it took you. So keep going. Uh, so I had this Pilates studio and like any entrepreneur, I think once you kind of max out, like what you can do with something you all of a sudden you're like, and now I'm bored. <laughs> like, and now <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like I always, if I'm not scaling or growing, I'm just, un I get unhappy pretty quickly. Uh, you're not, you don't feel fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. And I was married at that point. I had two toddlers. And so I was like, I got to do something different. And I was always passionate about the nutrition side. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to put this business aside, meaning I sold the business right. and pursue this dream and talk about a leap of faith. Cause I was right. like, at that point, I'm like, this is all I've ever known. And this right. is really important to hear. Pilates, the Pilates wellness studio was super easy. I could do it with my eyes closed and my hands tied behind my back so easy, so fun, really. Yeah, right. And it made really good money. And so my husband's like, wait, what are you doing? And I'm <laughs> like, I'm going to walk away from that, you know, and pursue, I wanted to open up a cold press juice company. It was kind of when juice was like coming on the scene and I was really big into like juice detoxing. There was a personal connection to like some healing I had had with like juice cleanses. So I was like, this is my new passion. I'm obsessed let's launch this juice company. And again, how, how do you launch a juice company? Like what, where, where do you even begin? Right. Like I'm on the phone talking to like farmers that build farm equipment in Northern California <laughs> that I'm like, so you make it like, uh, you just figuring it out, right? Yeah. You just one foot yeah. in front of the other. I can see the three feet, but I can't see anything beyond that one foot in front of the other. And so we ended up taking out a huge loan, launching the juice business, wildly successful but one of the hardest things mm. i've ever done in my life i mean when wow. some, when your product has a three-day shelf life oh it's a tough wow business it's a yeah. tough business so it was wildly successful but it actually literally just like destroyed my soul like it was just wow. an 80 hour a week job I was, you know, it was two years of really having to kind of completely pull away from my family, which 
you can only, you have to do that as an entrepreneur, right? There is massive sacrifice as an entrepreneur, yes. but I hit a wall where we are actually getting ready to, you know, make a decision. Like, do we go national with this juice company? Like okay. totally like the next level. And I'll never forget a conversation I had with Brian, my husband, and like weighing the pros and cons and like writing things down on paper. And he's like, so if this does everything you've ever dreamed it could do, you know, like millions of dollars, we get sold, you know, somebody buys us out we could, it, because it's not a national brand. I was like, yeah, but we will be divorced and our kids are going to be totally messed up. Wow. And wow. I was like, so it's not worth it. So even if the biggest dream happens, if it will require me to continue doing what I'm doing and we will be divorced and our kids will be messed up and nothing is worth that. Nothing. So I'm walking away. I'm walking no. away. And it was so hard mm. because he's like, we borrowed against our house. Right. We have a hundred thousand dollar loan to the bank to pay back. Right. The company's doing well. Yeah. But you're going to walk away. And I'm like, Unless you want to get a divorce, you know what right. I mean? Not that he wanted that, but as a, I mean, when you're financially like leading yeah. a family, that's a really hard decision to make. Absolutely. And he backed me in making that decision. Thank God. And I, I have to say, like, I always say, what good is it if we're a public success and a private failure? Right. 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 And then you have to come to realize, like at the end of the day, for me, for all of us, for you, family is number one. It's the most important thing. And what good is it if you're making a million dollars, but then like you're, like you said, you're going through a divorce, your kids don't, don't see you. And it's amazing. Like some people don't come to that realization, but you did, yeah. you know, yeah. and, uh, and you took that leap of faith again. And, yeah. and I also think no matter how prepared you are in life, and I think this is for entrepreneurs, no matter how prepared you could do everything right, dot your I's, cross your T's, you're going to have failures or things are going to come around the yeah. corner. Right. And like that, you weren't expecting that. And then it yeah. came to a head with your marriage and the business and the stress and the work week. But that's part of the process that's creating the new you that took you to the right. next level, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. I mean, that's just it. It's like, uh, there's so many things that I just want to like impart to your audience because that failure, right? right? That over six figure loss that we had to pay back the, the, you know, borrowing against our house that we had to pay back all of that gave me the perspective that I needed to step into the coaching world, to step into beach body at that right. point. And I never, I mean, I, I, when I made that huge leap of faith, like off the cliff, I felt like I was just like, Oh shit. I hope somebody's <laughs> Catch me, you know, like jumping right. out of the plane. What was on the other side was I built a seven figure business pretty dang quickly. I could right. never have thought that at that time. Like, right. oh, boy, you're going to leave this. You're going to make this little leap of faith. Yeah. And you're going to become a millionaire in the next couple of years. Like, <laughs> like I couldn't I address that big at the time, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I do believe often that level of success requires that level of risk. Yes. And that level of faith, you know, yeah. I, the I more you want to earn, the more you have to sacrifice. Yeah. And you know, yeah. we're going through the juice ups and downs and the Pilates and your addiction created the person for you to be number one in the company and to right. become a seven figure earner. And when we go through it, I think people don't realize that we, the people get caught up victim mentality. They have excuses they blame. And really it's, it's, you know, you, it's God putting you through that to prepare you for where you're going. Yeah. Like that's the strongest faith. Right. And, yeah. and then you did it. And, and I'd love to talk more, talk about like, vision and manifestation and things that are really near and dear to you. And I'm a big believer in vision. Like I always say, like I would close my eyes and see myself achieving whatever it is before yes. I'm even there, like feel it, taste it. And there was a story once, and I'm going to let the audience know this, that you shared years ago. And I don't remember it, but I'm going to let you know what you said. And I remember you said you were in line at the grocery store. I don't know if you know where I'm going with this. And you like, you just remember like your next business builders were coming to you in yes. your path. And I look at that you know, whether speaking who's God or who's going to put in my path, whatever they believe in for yeah. me, God and faith for my next events. And do you remember, like, do you remember that yes. moment? Cause I remember you sharing that. 
don't know where. Maybe you told me. I don't remember. But I yeah, remember you talking I remember. About it. I remember it so well because it was a pivotal moment in my life, and the, oh. the pivotal moments in our life always become our speaking points, right? <laughs> so, so share I, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. I think what you're also speaking to, and I'll get to that in just a second. I want to yeah. touch on this one piece. Is it's it's whatever story you decide, right? It's yeah. like. What, what do you want to tell yourself an empowering story or a disempowering story? Mm. Because I could tell myself like, you know, Oh, I'm an addict. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. Oh, I'm that. I could, I could create the story for why I can't be successful. Or I can look at the exact same circumstances and look at it through the lens of like, Holy shit. Like, look what I've done. Look what I've overcome. Look who I've become persevered through look what I've conquered if I can conquer all that then I can do anything yeah it's it's whatever you decide but you got to kind of step out of your life sometimes and go Mm. like I need to get the story straight I need to get the story on paper I need to decide what my identity is Mm. and what the vision is and what the story is and then move forward with Mm. that yeah. Right. And so what I remember talking about was also like I, I teach a lot of kind of this emotional scale where like, you know, fear and dread and scarcity are on the low end and joy and love and all that's on the high. And it's really where you're living emotionally depends on if you're attracting and manifesting good into your life. Like I can remember yeah. when I built that, you know, when I on my way to hit that seven figure mark, when I hit that seven figure mark, I kind of looked back and I was like, Oh, it's kind of like I got really happy and therefore I got all the success. Like the success Mm. manifested and came to me. Yeah. Because I was so in my joy. I was so in my passion. I was on fire. But people think everyone else thinks it's the other way around. Like, oh, well, you got rich and then you got happy. And I'm like, not no, 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 no. It's completely the opposite. Like you really have to be operating at a higher vibration is what it is energetically to be able to find the clients, to unlock the deals, to get the speaking gigs. And so when I was talking about this grocery store thing, I was talking about a time in my life where I was experiencing like all of a sudden, like imposter syndrome, because I had actually like gone to the top of the company super fast. Right. And I was sitting there with like all these big wigs. And I was kind of like, I don't belong here. I can't do this. I'm going to be found out. Like the whole imposter syndrome, which was radically different than kind of I had ever felt. And I was so aware of the negative emotional state I was in. Mm. And guess what was happening in that negative emotional state? Uh, Zero clients coming. Zero people joining my team. My team was doing nothing. Like, and here's what we do. My team's doing nothing. I can't get any clients. I can't get the speaking yes. gig. Like, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. And when you focus on that, that's what you get. Yep. Of attraction, right? I, I'm focused on, I'm not getting the gigs. Well, the universe is going to be like, here's no more gigs. You know, right. like, It just comes back to you. And I knew that because I've studied this stuff for years. So I, I sat down and I was like, okay. I am so crystal clear on what's not working in my life. And I am also aware of this fact that I'm hyper-focused on that. And therefore I keep getting that. And so Mm. I did this exercise that I created called contrast and clarity. And all it is, is contrast. I have no clients. Clarity. I love how it feels when I get clients, right? Mm. Like take that statement and And flip flip it. it. Yeah. And so I took all these statements that were just dragging me down and I flipped them. Mm, and wow. so like no one's joining my team, like this negative, like anxiety spiral, like no one's joining my team to instead of saying, and this is a really important point when it comes to mantras or affirmations, because I don't believe in the world of like all the airy fairy stuff. Mm. I believe in kind of the scientific energetic part of this. Yeah. So an affirmation, for example, if my limiting belief is nobody's joining my team. I can't say to myself, you know, my team's growing by thousands of people every day. Like it's a lot. Yeah. Like I'm sitting there saying this in the mirror and I'm like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And I'm like, you're lying to yourself. Like that Mm. feels even worse. Yeah. And so you're creating more negative emotion because Mm. you're lying to yourself through this affirmation that you're supposed to be saying. Right. So what I teach people is just a few words in front. 
I love how it feels when mm. more mm. and more I'm stepping into, right? right? So let's take that. Nobody's joining my team to the lie of people are joining my team every day. And you're like, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it feels when rock stars join my team. That's mm. true. And I've created had a, a bridge, right? You're creating that bridge. And so then you sit in that affirmation, but here's where like just the simple little, like I'm in a negative state. How do I get to a positive state? So I was in the grocery store one day and I'm a very impatient person because I'm like, go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, this person's taking forever. Like the deli line was taking forever. And then the, you know, I get in line to check out and they're taking forever. And I was, you know, irritated. Mm. And I know that the second I'm irritated with traffic with anyone, if I'm irritated with my husband, my business is not growing. Mm -hmm. Like, I know that might sound radical to people, but like, it doesn't matter what gets you in the negative state. You stop any growth in any capacity in any area of your life. It's all in synergy. I like to say it's all connected. It's all connected. Energy is energy. Law of attraction is law of attraction. You got to stay up here. Yeah. And so in that grocery store line, I felt that frustration and that anger and that irritation. And I was like, what an opportunity. What an opportunity because I'm stuck. Mm. I'm like, I'm pausing to just. I love how it feels when I mm. love how it feels when I know more and more, I know more and more, I feel more and more, yeah. I love, you know, and just, absolutely. it's, it's a gift. And that's mm. really one of the main principles. Like this will be the book that I write. How is this a gift? When mm. you find yourself in that negative state. And I always say, I can, you can use this from traffic to tragedy. Mm -hmm. How is this a gift? Right. You know, if you're stuck in traffic, you can easily be like literally steam coming mm -hmm. out your ears, cursing, slamming the steering wheel, right. or you can go, wait, whoa, whoa, yep. how is this a gift? Right. Maybe this is an opportunity to call my uncle. Maybe this is an opportunity to listen to this podcast. Maybe this is not mm. like, let me use this. Right. Everything, everything can be a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Because people will yourself. look people will look at what's wrong with something instead of looking at what's right with it. And we more often go to the lack than go to the positive thing. And you know, yesterday I shared in a video because it's really been hitting me a lot that even in growth and entrepreneurship, and it kind of plays into what you're saying is so often we think, and you said it early on, when you achieve that thing, I'm going to be happy. Or when I get to this point, when I earn that amount of money. And finally it came to me yesterday. It was like a middle of the afternoon. I was on a run and I'm like, I'm fine. Happiness is in the moment. Like I'm able to run. I have a healthy body right now. I have uh, events in a couple of weeks. Like you, it's not when I get this next event or get this next client. It's when you could find peace with where you are, it opens up the abundance and you have more come towards you. It all comes together, but it's really, you really have to, it's the tweak of the mindset. I think people so often are looking at the lack, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And what people don't understand, and like, if we go into this whole world of manifestation, it's like the only way to manifest something because you get what you're putting out, right? That's, right. that's manifestation. So if I am sitting in six figure self and I'm doing, going about my life because I make a hundred thousand dollars and this is how I operate because I make a hundred thousand dollars. And this is the car I drive because I make a hundred thousand dollars. And this is how I spend my money. Right. then you're never going to attract the, the seven figures. Like you have to step into, and Wayne Dyer speaks about this so often in so many of his books. It's like, you have to step into the feeling as if the wish has been fulfilled. Oh, I love it. it. When I wanted to become number one, the number one person in the company that we were both right. in at 400,000, right. like talk about a freaking dream, right? <laughs> like, I mean, just right. like a ridiculous dream. Like, kind of want to be the number one person out of 400,000. I had to literally every day, I was like, how does the number one person show up? How does the number one person drive their car? How does the mm. number one person parent their children? How does the number one person show up in the grocery store line, treating people with love and respect love and it. joy, right? Like it. yeah, you have to step into the feeling as if when you're on that run, David, it's like you're living, you are living your dream. You right. are a speaker. You are, you do have the gigs booked. Like, right. You have to be in that emotion, right? Yeah. It's so powerful. It was such a big, and it doesn't happen overnight. It's a lot of growing, looking back, reflecting a lot of reading. 
going through struggles, going through failures and finally realizing like, if I'm chasing that thing, I'll be chasing forever and will always be unfulfilled. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and to just be grateful that I'm right here now and what I have and only worry about the 10 feet in front of that's, us. Right? right. Oh, that, that's well, so powerful. Everything, everything we want is because of the feeling we think it's going to give us. Like, yeah. I remember that being like a mind blowing thing for me where I was like, I want all this because I think it's going to make me feel a certain way. Mm. But every emotion is available to us literally in this moment. Right. We choose. We choose. Yeah. It's so powerful. It's, it's, it's real. It, sometimes you just, and people that are listening, you may need to like pause and sit and really think about this because it's deep and you have to like process it, like finding the gratitude now and being happy where you are now and don't compare or worry about other things and it will attract more of what you put out. You know, it's even a simple put out negative in social media. Next thing you know, you have all the negative coming back to you. It's just, it's everywhere. You know, if you complain and whine, people are going to complain and whine. It's just what you put out. I, I love it. Uh, amazing. So good. So good. So Maura, I have to ask you this question too. And I jotted this down because your husband also uber successful, right? Starting from his hard work, knowing him, you know, putting mulch chips around mailboxes for free and doing that and knowing your husband's story. But like, you both are super successful. You have kids, you have a family. Like, what do you think are the attributes for the couples out there that contribute to both mom and dad being successful, having a healthy marriage and all of those things? I'd love to kind of get your perspective on that as mom entrepreneur with a dad that's also a successful entrepreneur and you're being there as parents. Yeah, gosh, I feel like we are... Like, I always think about Brian and I, I just think we're a good tag team with like, mm. I, I feel like we're like, we're both like coaches and our kids are the quarterbacks. And we're like, <laughs> you go there, we go there. You know, where it's like the tag team of just trying to manage. Mm. And, I mean, just managing kids this day and age with all their activities and our kids are both like uber athletes. So they're in 18 different things all the time. Right. But I think there's growing pains. I think that's important to point out, right? Like communication is so important and always prioritizing. Like you said, you know, you can be a public success and a private failure. So, you know, there were times along our whole entire marriage where we've been aware of like, the marriage is, is suffering. And so we got to go tend to it, right? Mm. We've got to put intention there. We've got to put time there. We've got to put work there. Yeah. I think you just always have to keep that front and center. Um, mm. You know, there, there comes an appreciation too. Like, you know, I can remember when I started traveling a whole lot, like that was super hard on Brian. He, they, our right. kids were little, you know, and all right. of a sudden, like dad's trying to get kids dressed in the morning and <laughs> bed and like, yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also like the growing pains of that is like, I can remember him, like, I'm sure being like crappy to me about leaving. And I was crappy back that like, blah, 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 blah. but then I remember coming home and just being like, he grew in his, his relationship as a dad with my kids, you know? And like, yeah. I just, I understood and, and moms that always like put table their own dreams because they think they have to spend 24 seven with their children. Right. Listen, my kids wouldn't have the relationship with their dad that they do. If I had been around all right. the time, they wouldn't right. have the relationship with my mom, their grandmother. Yeah. In and watch them when Brian and I have been traveling, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have so much, you know, yeah. I mean, my kids understand what it is, what it looks like to stay up late, get up early, mm. hustle for your dreams, mm. that there's sacrifice, that there's, you know, tears. Like, yeah. I would much rather them watch that example than me just be able to be there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, as a mom. And oh. not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just talking to the people that, are sacrificing their dreams mm. because of the guilt of parenthood. Right, right. And I, I, I also want to just say this real quick because I think this is just marriage, not even as entrepreneurs. 
Cause gosh, you know, and I'm sure you're there too. Like we have really dear friends getting divorced and, mm. and I, I, it's just heartbreaking the number of divorces that you witness over time, you know? Yeah. Um, and people often ask me like, how do you, you and Brian keep it together? And I'm like, God mm -hmm. and therapy. Yeah. Like <laughs> if we didn't have God, like right. at the top of our triangle yep. and they a good therapist, we would have gotten divorced somewhere along the way like absolutely non-negotiables and and we're not in therapy all the time we haven't been in therapy in a while but the second we need to go i'm like yep. can we yep. get in with you we need some we need to work some stuff out you know yep. absolutely and realizing if you guys aren't good then your kids get affected like i have found for me personally when i do travel or I, even when i'm exercising times and i'm going on a long run I have so much clarity, like, all right, I've been living a parallel life with my wife, Kristen, the last couple of weeks, because there's been so much with the kids. Because, And I'm like, we need to take a step back. We're having a date night. Like this weekend, yeah. we're figuring out, even if it's 45 minutes, to have that clarity or when I'm away, realizing, ah, you know, we need to adjust because it's not always easy. And you, you do have to make sacrifices. But with that, Moira, I truly believe our kids, and I've seen it with my kids, and I've seen it especially with my middle daughter, who's a big athlete with ice hockey and traveling, like your kids, and I say this all the time, they don't always follow what you say, they follow what you do. And my kids, I have seen now as they're getting older, my oldest is in college, that you know, when I would sometimes be in the kitchen and having a tough time, they're like, dad, we don't need a motivational talk. Cause I'm always like, listen, find the positivity. Like there's gratitude. They like, dad, they, they would make fun of me, but you know what more, what I'm seeing as they're becoming ladies, yeah. they're actually taking those attributes and they're becoming those people. And I'm like, wow, they may make fun of, or they may do certain things, but they're watching everything you're doing. And if you quit and give up when it gets hard, whether it's your marriage or business, your kids are watching and that's how they're going to live. So you want to leave a legacy. It's how you show up in your marriage and in your life and your career, because man, oh man, I think people get it twisted. They think it's, oh, when I tell my kids to do this, nope, you may tell them that, but they're watching you. They are watching. Absolutely. And it goes back to that whole, like, I think every mother and father would be like, I would die for my children. And so we sacrifice and we sacrifice right. and we sacrifice and we would, but I'm like, but would you live? Like, how about we, right. how about we put that, you know, I would die for yeah. my children aside and ask yourself, are you really living for your children? Mm. Are you pursuing your dreams? Cause you cannot tell your child that they can do anything and to pursue their dreams and to chase after what they're put on this earth to do yeah. and to sacrifice it all yourself. Yeah. You can't do that nope. and expect they're going to do exactly what you're doing. Like yeah. you owe it to them to show them what that looks like. Oh, it's so true. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Moira, would you say today, is there something that, like what drives you today? Or is there a fear that you have? Like, I know you're type A, you're similar to me, but like, is there something that drives you with your why or a fear that you have? Like what keeps you going at the highest level now, day in and day out? I think there isn't a, I mean, I was about to say there isn't fear, but there is always a fear. Yeah. Um, at this stage in the game, though, it, it's just going back to Wayne Dyer. It really boils down to, I don't want to die with my music still in me. Mm. That's my fear. That's I what Wayne that. Dyer. Yeah. He always says, don't die with your music still in you. And I feel like I've barely scratched the surface of what I'm supposed to teach the world, how I'm supposed to impact the world. And my fear is my greatest regret would be lying on my deathbed mm. saying, you know, I didn't do it. I didn't uh, do it because I was scared or I was insecure or I was unsure of myself. I don't want to do that. So that's I, the fear and that's the drive. I love it. And you can't get time back. Like I, I can't say this enough. And for me, it was losing my best friend, getting shot and killed that it made me realize like all we have is today and yeah. to go out there and to not you know, you don't want to have regrets, you know, right. like in a way you may feel the same way. I feel like I'm just getting started and I'm realizing now it's about how I can serve and impact the world yes. um, on a bigger scale. It's just, it's so crazy, but I love that, you know, not to, to have music. What was that? Say that again. What did he say? He don't said, die. don't with die music. with your music still in you. Oh my goodness. That's so powerful. I love that. So let me ask you this. Say there's somebody that is really struggling in their life right now. 
maybe financially, health, well, everything in all areas. What would you sell to somebody if they want to, you know, what is the one thing to help them get started to get back on track? You know, and this may have to take you back to where you were, but somebody that's really struggling in all areas in their life. And today's the day, like, you know what, I need to make a change. Where would you have them start? Uh, this is the, probably one of my greatest pain points with just, you know, what I want for people and what I see them not doing. It's like, it boils down to just take action, mm. right? Like massive action, yes. sign up for something, hire the coach, book the therapist, do the mastermind, go to the live event. Mm. Like, I don't think people understand, like when I hit kind of a low spot, like a struggle spot, <laughs> I am doing all those things. I'm like, all right, I'm hiring these three people. I'm committing to this. I'm yes. going to this. I'm signing up for this. <laughs> like, it's like 18 things. Right. Happen, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like, I, I just pull it, pull it all out. And so many people, I just think, you know, they're just like, oh, they're thinking, they're thinking and they're talking and they're thinking and they're talking and they're stuck and they're talking and they're thinking and they're talking. And, and I'm like, do something for yes. God. Takes. Like the only thing that's going to get you out yes. of this is action. Yes. Like, and Tony Robbins always says, take action in the moment of inspiration. I would also say, take action in the moment of desperation. Ah, yeah. When yep. I am sitting somewhere and I'm like, oh, I should do this. I don't hope that that thought's going to carry over for when I get home because I know it's sure as shit not going to carry over. Right. You know, when you're like, I need to do this send a text message, call somebody, like take Do it. literally action in that moment that commits you to making that thing happen, right? Uh, it could be a text message where it's like, and, and this is a great example of like, if you're struggling. So two weeks ago, I'm not going to go into all the details, but it really goes into line with what you're just saying. You know, time is, we don't know when it's going to be up. We had two acquaintances die a couple weeks ago, 48 years old, 49 years old. Oh my God. And that was stacked with like four other things. And it, I went into like a downward spiral that I was not expecting and I was not prepared for. And I'm never in, like, I'm just mm. never that undone. And I was undone. Right. And so I had this moment of like complete and utter falling apart and it's so hard. And so I want to tell you, like, I understand what those moments are of struggle Mm. And you're like, what do I do? What do I say? How do I do? And I just, I was like, I, I can't pick up the phone. Like the phone's too heavy. Right. Like I don't know where to begin. Mm. Right. But I texted, I was like, you got to do it. Moira, just freaking do it. And I, it was like that phone weighed a thousand pounds. Mm. And I texted three friends. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Yeah. Yep. I had to commit myself to opening up those conversations that I knew would help me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I'm talking about. It's like, you have to take action that's going to commit you to getting to the other side because mm. otherwise you're just sweeping it under the rug Yeah, and nothing's going to change. It gets worse. Months. Yeah, it gets worse. So yeah. act. Oh, I love action. And I know John Maxwell, he always says, don't wait till you feel like to start. Don't wait, like, don't wait till you feel like doing it to start. You need to start and then you'll start feeling like it. Yeah. And that yeah. for me is kind of what you just said. You just need to take action, whether inspiration or desperation. So yeah. more, before I ask you my last question, and then I want you to share also where people can find you. I just want to end and just say, I, uh, I'm grateful for you getting to know you. I, I applaud you, like not knowing what you did through your addiction and where you came out and then just your success and watching you. And I have to just applaud the work that you have done, the impact that you have made, the leaders that you have generationally have affected the husband that you have that I got to get, you know, I got to know. So like more absolutely amazing. You do amazing things. I get to watch you states away from afar, but uh, amazing, amazing. Thank um, you. My last question is, is I always like to ask people like, how would you want to be remembered? You know, if this was your last day, it's a deep question. I always think about this, but you know, how would you want people to remember Moira Kusaba um, in your life? Whew, that is a big question. And I've thought about it often because I'm always thinking like what I teach a lot of things, like what is the one, you know, what is the one piece? And to me, I always go back to what I've already shared here is listen to the whisper. Like if mm, I can, I love leave that. My, if I can leave my kids with one piece of advice 
you know, it, it is that it's like, if you listen to that whisper before it gets louder and louder and louder, which builds mm -hmm. to sometimes catastrophic, you know, like wake up, you're not listening. I just believe that we are being guided every single second of every single day that those signs are there. Those nudges are there that mm. it's whether you call it your, whether you call it God or spirit or intuition or just your gut feeling, your gut instinct, like it is there. And I have lived by that for so long that I know that it never is wrong. Mm. It is never going to steer you wrong. In fact, it will steer you to a life beyond comprehension. Mm. So listen, listen to the whisper. I love that. It's like, follow your gut. Yeah. And I'll listen to that. Absolutely love it. Um, Moira, where can people find you? And guys, she has her book, a proof book. I have gotten it. My wife has gotten it. It's great. It's probably on her desk. Amazing. I know. Book. I usually have like 18 <laughs> copies. They're all over there though. It's there, but it's all good. Where can people connect with you, find with you, website? And I will put it in the show notes below. But for anybody that wants to connect with you, where can they find you? Yeah, it's super simple and not simple. It's Moira Cassaba, which nobody can spell, but that's all it is. Moira Cassaba, it'll be in the show notes. Yes. But that's YouTube, um, yes. website, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Um, and yeah, the book of proof, I've got a couple journals, but the book of proof is my morning process journal that really, again, I never was planning on writing like a morning process <laughs> journal, but I listened to the whisper. Um, yeah. it, 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 you know, when I looked back at like, what am I doing to create this life of just incredible success? It was that process. And then mm. I started teaching kind of behind the curtain, that yeah. process to my, my team. And I just saw, you know, people building thriving businesses and restoring marriages and completely like 180 changing just themselves. And it was all attributed to this process. And, mm. you know, the nudge was like, hello, the world needs this. Yeah. So get a book of proof because it right. will change. I love it. Thank you so much, Moira. Guys, this is amazing. Please share this episode. Uh, drop a comment below. Follow Moira. You will grow each and every day just by connecting with her. Moira, thank you so much. Amazing. Please tell your husband I said hi, and we will talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Personal Perseverance Project. My goal every single day is to help people live up to their fullest potential. So please share this episode, subscribe to my channel, and maybe even leave a review. Be sure to connect and follow me on all my social media channels. And if you would like more information about me potentially being a keynote speaker at your event, or maybe you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one as your private coach, be sure to go to my website at davidakinspeaks.com for more information. Thank you.